today's absolutely unreasonable upgrading of a mid-90s Power Mac is brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. In our last video on this, 1997 Power Macintosh 9600, the biggest and beastliest of all the beige Power Macs. We cleaned it up, made sure it was fully working, and up the RAM to 1.5 gigabytes. Well, today we're taking things to an absolutely unreasonable level, installing some very ridiculous and hard to find upgrades, aiming for specs that have absolutely no business in a 1997 Power Mac. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy insane, uncompromising computer builds that would have cost multiple tens of thousands of dollars if they weren't happening 25 years after the fact, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this is part two of our build on this Power Macintosh 9600, which is my project for Marchintosh, consistently voted number one Macintosh themed month of the year. If you haven't seen part one, check that out right here because we go over some of the things that make this particular Power Mac so darn special. But today, we're doing something that I've wanted to do for years. And I really think we're gonna wind up with the world's most powerful beige Power Mac. In theory, this 9600 can be upgraded pretty far beyond even the G3 machines that came after it. For instance, we've already upgraded this thing to a ridiculous 1.5 gigs of RAM, where the machines that came after this thing could only go up to 768 megs. But let me give you a quick rundown of the other stuff we're gonna do here. So we have it booting off of a blue SCSI right now, but I'd rather boot this off of a real solid state hard drive. And we can do that with a PCI SATA controller card that's been flashed specifically for Mac. And yeah, this should actually boot both Mac OS X and Mac OS 9. Optical drive? Forget SCSI CD-ROM drive, that's boring. If we're going SATA card, we can use the Super Drive out of a Mac Pro. And this should also be bootable in Mac OS 9 and Mac OS 10. For processor, we're swapping out this totally reasonable 300 megahertz 604E for a completely unreasonable Sonnet Crescendo 1 gigahertz G4, which is easily the rarest Macintosh accelerator that I own. And to top it all off, we'll be upgrading the video card in this thing, which was a stock eight megabytes to a Radeon 9250 that's been flashed specifically for Mac. And not only that, but our friend DOSDude1 has put new VRAM chips on this thing. So our Mac should recognize a whopping 128 megabytes. But I am a little bit worried about the 25 year old power supply in this thing, especially if I'm gonna run it for long periods of time, like eight hours a day for three days at the upcoming VCF East where for the third year in a row, I have a display with Mac 84 and Mike's Mac Shack, and I'd really like to bring this thing along. So we're gonna use a special kit from our friend in Japan, K Koba, to convert a modern ATX power supply to work in this thing. Anyway, we'll look at each thing a little bit closer as we get them ready to stick in this machine, but for now, let's crack this thing open. Right after a word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website all about the wonders of Sonnet upgrades back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Not only could I build it in minutes with Squarespace, but I could do it without writing a single line of code. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from, and from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and works great on mobile devices. With Squarespace's extensive built-in tool set, I can also optimize for SEO, create a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I almost forgot, before we actually crack this thing open, let me show you what I built for our blue SCSI. And actually for Zulu SCSI too. In last week's video, I showed off how I was cloning this original drive bezel to be 3D printable. 
But I've done more than this, much more. I built a two-piece mounting system for both Blue Scuzzy and Zulu Scuzzy for Power Mac 9600 machines. And uh, it should actually work in other versions of this case, like the 8600, but check it out. This thing clips on much the same way that the original does, exposing the mounted Blue Scuzzy or Zulu Scuzzy, both of which mount so that the SD card is accessible and the light is available, if you have the drive activity light, to shine through my little Scuzzy logo here. But check out how cool that looks. Okay, so the first upgrade we should do is the SATA controller card because we're gonna to have to install Mac OS 9 on here and then also install the drivers on here to work with the video card later. And yeah, this is just an inexpensive SATA controller card that has the magical SIL3112 chip on there from Silicon Image. You can buy these for super cheap on Amazon or eBay, like $13 or so. Or you can actually buy these pre-flashed from sellers on eBay, but they charge quite a premium, like 50 bucks. It's not too hard to flash yourself. Prutk Mods has a pretty good video on it that will walk you through. I'll link to that in the description below. And then for the actual hard drive, I have this SP SATA 3. Wow, these Amazon sellers really need to proofread their model names and numbers. Yeah, that is unfortunate. I kind of don't trust this. Let's go with something a little more name brand. Here we go, a PNY 240 gigabyte SATA SSD. All right, well, I'm sure this chip runs at least a little warm, so I'm gonna put it in the slot furthest away from the CPU. And then we'll need a nice long SATA cable. And I really wanna use the original drive bracket sled here and of course it wasn't designed for a 2.5 inch laptop sized SSD. So instead of doing the old single screw and pray, I'm going to 3D print a bracket. So I'll be right back. There we go, printed in purple, four bolts. That thing's not going anywhere. All right, let's see if it detects that drive. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, look at that. 228.9 gigs. <laughs> so I think I actually want to set up two partitions. We'll say 40 gigs for Mac OS 9 and the rest of it for an eventual Mac OS 10 install. Nice. And then I'll rename the blue scuzzy to blue scuzzy. Untitled will be Mac OS 9. Untitled 2. We'll call it OS 10. Then hopefully I can just copy everything off of Blue Scuzzy into the Mac OS 9 partition and then boot from it. All right, it appears to be booting off of the SATA SSD on the SATA controller card. Awesome. Okay, well, Hit a few snags here, and as usual, they are entirely my fault. First of all, we're going to have to postpone installing the modern ATX power supply using the kit from Koba because I should have read the instructions first. There are very detailed and very good instructions that have the caveats of this kit, including picking the right power supply. 
And specifically, the orientation of this connector here needs to be this way. Otherwise, it's not going to fit in the case. It's going to kind of be in the middle of the separation area of the two jacks on the original power supply. So, yeah, this one unfortunately isn't going to fit right. I've ordered one that will. Seasonic and Acbell power supplies do have the correct orientation for this application. <sighs> Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait. Issue number two. I broke the hard drive. <laughs> I stretched this cable perhaps a little too strongly and literally snapped off the connector here inside the SATA connector here. So... Yeah, it looks like we're going to go with the ass drive after all. Okay, we're booted off of the ass drive and uh, yeah, let's get ready to install this sweet hacked up video card. Yeah, Colin was nice enough to not only install new uh, VRAM chips on here so that this card could detect 128 megs with the Mac ROM, but he also recapped all the capacitors to these nice, uh, I think they're Nichion. So yeah, this thing is the most powerful possible video card that you can put in a PCI Power Macintosh. And although the video card will work in Mac OS 10 without issue, unfortunately it won't work in Mac OS 9 without some equally hacked up drivers. Fortunately, they are right here on Macintosh Garden and I've taken the liberty of installing them already. All right, boots into Mac OS, just fine. Oh yeah, and there is our sweet, sweet 128 megs of VRAM right underneath our 1.5 gigs of regular RAM. <laughs> All right, and back to Macintosh Garden for two more things. First, I've gone ahead and installed the correct driver for our one gigahertz Sonic Crescendo, and I'm downloading Ex Post Facto which is the best way to install higher versions of Mac OS X than should be compatible with a particular Mac. Okay, let's get this SCSI CD-ROM drive out of here. And in its place, we're gonna do the super drive from a Mac Pro. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And now the easiest processor swap known to humanity. 300 megahertz. One gigahertz. Can you believe that things used to be this easy? All right, processor installed, super drive installed. I really wish we had that upgraded power supply, but this should be fine as long as we don't stick any more PCI cards in there. It's alive. Oh yeah, Crescendo G4. <laughs> All right, well, the uh, optical drive works because Wherever I was using this last, I left a CD in there. I was looking for this. Son of a gun, this is my 921 original CD. Anyway, now that we know that apparently everything works and we have a one gigahertz machine with 1.5 gigs of RAM, you know what we're gonna do. Mac OS X from original install media using ex post facto. Oh yeah, Mac OS Tiger. All right, Mac OS X installed DVD loaded up just fine. And <laughs> it's just so crazy to have a super drive from a Intel Mac Pro in this 1997 Power Mac running just fine. <laughs> All right, so to install Mac OS X, 
We just have to pop into ex post facto here. And yeah, located the install DVD right there. Installing it onto the OS 10 partition. I think we just need to change the input device and output device here. Install from CD, DVD. All right, <laughs> it's doing the things. Hmm, still waiting for root device. I feel like I've seen that before. Still waiting for root device, which is confusing to me because that means it can't find the device it's trying to boot the OS from. So I don't know what that's about. Well, I went through my old videos and turns out that just over a year ago, I went through this same rigmarole trying to install Mac OS X on an old Macintosh clone. Well, I went and dug up the DVD-ROM drive that I used a year and a half ago, and don't you know, here we are, the Mac OS X Tiger installer. So, gonna see if this thing takes an install. All right, we're installing. All right, well, the installer is showing about three and a half hours remaining on this slow as molasses, scuzzy DVD-ROM drive I'm using. So I think I'll end this video on a bit of a cliffhanger, but I do have some big plans for this machine, including I wonder what kind of interesting software or games we could try to really test this thing out. Hmm, if only I could see into the future. Oh, and just in the nick of time, our Seasonic power supply came in. So in our next video, we can actually try that awesome install kit from Kiro's Mac Mods. But on this sort of a bombshell, I'm gonna call this video here. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg Rutke, Jason Pepez, Justin Hemmings, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.